Okay, so uh, let me explain this to you, okay? Um, so this is how it goes. So uh, let me go to the slide. So this is the S2F, right, that uh, you can find online and so on. Uh, what uh, I have here, I this is a real issuance. Like uh, what you see here, these are very coins that are produced. Every dot is a day. And uh, here are price, the real price in dollars. And here you have the number of coins, right? So for example, you have 10,000 coins. And each of these, it's a cycle, right? And this is before the first halving. So what happens here? What happens is the price goes up. And I even show this in animations. The price goes up by itself. And we know what drives the price. I already show in my previous work is adoption. It doesn't have anything to do with the production of coins. And the way that uh, somebody that uh, plays with data from morning to evening, like I do, for 30 years, because this has been my job, right? We are expert in looking at this data. We know how to analyze the data. We know how to look after some time, like anybody that works in a field, looks at the data, immediately you know what you're dealing with. And I can tell you, this is the signature, this data. I look at this data, and in a second, I tell you, it's not correlated, <laughs> even if it looks correlated. It takes, you have to be an expert to understand this, right? But if you are not an expert, I, I don't want you to trust me because it's, not, it's all about verifying. I want, you, I want you to understand. I'm insisting in you in understanding. So to me, it's obvious, but if it is not obvious to you, let me explain it. So what happened, you see how the price goes up, right? You, you probably saw my animation. If you didn't see the animation, look at the animation. You can see price goes up and when it goes up, you know, from small value, you see if you, if you go down here was a few cents when it goes up, you know, until it is $1, you know, this was the bubble, this, uh, uh, darker area here because the prices were a little bit closer to each other. So in the animation, you can see that the uh, price is shifting left and right, left and right. And some of these values are about almost like, you know, three times smaller than some of the largest values. So the change in the X direction, so basically this, how many coins were produced in a given moment before the first halving were even bigger which the change you get when we add the halving so and the price didn't respond at all because what happens this is the sign that is the tell tell sign of something that is not correlated that is like a blob like that that means no correlation and also the fact that the price moves left and right left and right because it means a bunch of prices that are the same price can have many different values of issuance. So if you can have all these values of issuance, this way you go left and right, the price is more or less the same, it stays flat, and then the issuance changes. And then little by little, the price continues to go up and goes left and right, left and right, because the issuance were changing from day to day, okay? That is a telltale sign that there is absolutely no correlation between price and issuance. And then by the time, we ready to, you know, basically it took four years and the price was already there, was on top, was on top. And then when the issue, the, um, the Alvin come, and it's only basically one block, what happens? The rewards are becoming less, right? By a factor of two. So what happens is there is a jump on the left. There is like a shift, a sudden shift. Everything is shifted towards the left. But the shift doesn't produce a jump in the price because the price is already there. It's simply what is simply shifting is the issuance, is the average issuance. So it goes to the left. So it looks like to our eyes that everything jump both on the left and up. So this going up like that, it's an artifact. It's an illusion. It's a magical trick. If you don't know what you're dealing with, your eyes will be fooled thinking there is some correlation, but it's not a correlation. It's just that you are shifting everything to the left. And of course the price follows, but it's already there. 
it do, is, there is not a cause, you know, there is no link between cause and effect. The fact that the price also follows simply because it's already there. It has been there, you know, all this time. It went there in four years. It took four years to go there. It was growing while it was moving back and forth. That meant it was not a correlation. Do you understand that? It's a little bit subtle, but if you think about it, it's true. It's the same thing that happens if uh, you have the rules of a bishop and the bishop needs to move both left or right, right, but also up. And it needs to do it. It's not that the fact that it was a black uh, square caused, you know, the bishop to go up. It's just how it goes. You know, it's, I don't know. I don't know if that is a good example, but you understand what I'm saying? That uh, the price is already there and it continues to do what it was doing before, it is going up. And of course, where should it go? It goes to the left because everything shifted to the left. But it, it, the shifting to the left is not what caused the price to jump. It's an illusion. And then, you know, every, so this happens, you know, all, every time there is a, an halving. And then the next step is to draw this regression line, that is this red curve. The regression line doesn't know anything. It thinks that, yeah, they are correlated because they look like correlated. So when you do, that is one of the limitations of doing these regressions. If you have a bunch of clusters like this that represent data that are, they are correlated, but they are correlated in the most stupid and trivial way, not in any way that where you can say that the shift is what causing the price to go up because the price is not going up because of the shift. Absolutely not. It's an illusion. But uh, there is no way for the regression to know that. So it assumes that this regression, this uh, fake correlation, it's real. It's one of the limitations. It's one of these places where you should not do regression when you have clusters like this because in this case one moved you know like unless there are real reasons you know there is a real mechanism you know where you say okay these things change and and you know it could cause this but in this case it's obvious because you have a blob and i already show you data where uh, if it was a real correlation the correlation will be in between two there will be you will have you will see some sign by changing issuance with between the alvings, <coughs> there is also a change in price. <coughs> and the two do not correlate because you have these blobs. You already, the graph is already telling you there is no correlation there. There are these jumps and it creates this illusion of correlation simply because another way of saying is every four years there is a change in, in, uh, in issuance and that change happens in times every four years, and also the price goes up every four years in time. But the two are not correlated. They are just because the price has been going up or lower, it will have been different if the price didn't change. And then there was a sudden change in price too. Then, yes, you will say, whoa, the two jumped together. Maybe they are connected. The price was going up all this time by itself. And it arrived exactly to that place. Do you see how it makes no sense to see, say they are correlated? It makes absolutely no sense. And this, right, it's the model that you get when you take seriously this jumpiness. And it's not, you're thinking that, see, this is, when I hear people talking about what they think these models mean, right? Because uh, it's very difficult for me to understand where people go wrong and how they think about stuff, because I don't think like that. And stuff that people come up sometimes almost shocks me because my mind doesn't think in that way, but they think. So by how you describe this thing, you thought that actually um, Plan B did it on purpose, right? That uh, he created these uh, uh, stairs. No. It's actually an automated thing. You simply do the regression, and then the regression, what the, it's two step. The regression gives you, he claims there is a power law. There is not a power law. It's stupid. You can see this graph. First of all, look at this graph. You see how 
it doesn't fit very well like it goes kind of through the middle of uh, almost everything and then for the fourth bubble and for the third bubble it kind of doesn't right it does it's not a good fit anymore it doesn't go through the sand center so it's not a very good fit but it looks good and you even get a good r square because of these blobs the blobs kind of uh, make it seem so it is much more correlation with the trees it's, it's one of these things again that you need to have experience to understand this is the case because it makes a big deal say oh i get this huge big uh, r square no you are getting it through clusters and so it if you get it through clusters it's already suspicious it's already bad it's a very bad type of fitting when you have this cluster you have to be careful it's not that you cannot do it but you have to take extra extra care to make sure that what you're doing is correct and it doesn't it doesn't and in fact he's using it to fool people that is what makes me so mad about plan b is fooling people i think maybe he fooled himself initially now i think really sincerely that he's fooling people on purpose okay so no he doesn't create this ter these are stairs um it, it's just an a consequence you say draw me a straight line there is a straight line and the computer does what you tell it it's trying to draw the best line through these uh, four clusters and you can find a straight line because we are this huge big cluster of course you can find some line going through that cluster but the class that line cannot be taken seriously and then if you take it seriously it gives you a slope you know because it's a power law and then you say in this case three or whatever you say you say the price of Bitcoin is proportional. In this case, actually, I didn't even use S to F. I use issuance, but you can do the same thing with issuance because in this case, it will be inversely proportional. And you're saying it's it. you can do it both ways. Believe me, okay? Don't make a big issue. Uh, issuance and S to F are exactly related. I, I do it here with issuance to make things simple. I also did it with S to F. With this definition S to F, you will get... Uh, the same the same result and uh um and then you know in this case it will be kind of a negative slope because you see it's inversely proportional and you get this this is exactly the same model that he gets exactly the same and you see the jump happens of the alving because i'm using the real issuance uh and it looks exactly like his model okay now sometimes he kind of average out this uh data you know seems flatter uh, or maybe averages uh, where the jumps are not so evident so it looks more continuous it does all kind of different tricks to make it much better look much better looking than it, it is um but uh yeah so it's a, a fake data because what happens right the the model is responding and if you know how to interpret it correctly it gives you the answer. You say, well, you kind of told me there is some relationship. Here it is. You know, they seem, you know, they kind of go along. Yeah, <laughs> of course. You told me, you know, they happen both in time. This is what he's telling. They are growing both in time. You say they are proportional. I'm telling you how it looks like if they were proportional. And also I'm telling you, that in between the halving, there is no correlation. This is why it's flat. People don't understand where that flatten it comes from. It's the answer to there is no correlation. That is exact because you see how the price is doing its own thing, and instead, issuance is more or less flat. You know, it's kind of oscillating back and forth. It changes, but it, it stays within a range. That is exactly what you see in the alpha graph. That uh, it's cluster. So the cluster, when you go in time, it looks like that. It's flat because it means there is no correlation with the price. If it was correlation, it will follow the price in between the alpha. It doesn't. It means that in between the alpha, there is absolutely no correlation. Then for one single block, you see this jump, and then all of a sudden you have another stairs. You have another step. And that again, you know, the step seems to go somewhere, but it's simply because they are going to be somewhere. They are going to be in the middle of this progression. But again, it's an illusion. It's an artifact. It's because you are forcing your say, yeah, of course, where, the, where, where it's supposed to go. It's going to be in the middle 
of the price because the price is already there. Like in this, if you notice, this is exactly where the price was. Like it needs to go there, you know, because they are, it's based on this model where you're saying, draw a line through the middle. So it's going to go in the middle <laughs> where it's supposed to go. Nowhere else. You're telling it where to go. You're telling go through the middle. And it goes through the middle. Okay, kind of, because you can see at the third bubble, you see how the, it, it, it didn't go through the middle at the last bubble? Yeah, this is exactly what you're seeing there. It doesn't go through the middle. And not because of China, not because of all the bullshit. It doesn't go because it doesn't fit. The two are not related to each other. It's an illusion. It's an artifact. And, and so to show you that it's an artifact, I can use noise. I can, instead of a real issuance, I'm using the real price. I'm using fake issuance. So I just randomize. Here, somebody told me, oh, but you're just using millions. So it's the same time. No, I'm, I can use billions. I can use trillions. I can use quadrillions. I can use 10 coins, one coin. I can use anything you want. I could even use negative coins, you know, if I want it. Uh, I can use anything at all on the x-axis and make it random, like basically random. Like with a computer, you can create the random numbers. And these random numbers, I made it so where at random places, because I wanted to randomize even when these jumps happen, it's not every four years. It's uh, sometimes it's every 3.2 years, 1.5 years later. You see how they are kind of sparse like that because I kind of kept four years, but sometimes it's five years, 10.2, so 3.5, nine years. It's all over the place. And you see, I can still make a line going through. How come? I choose random numbers. So if there was a real correlation between the two, how come? Because they're happening in time. And so you can always find some kind of line going through these huge, big, dispersed dots. And so, and sometimes it goes through the middle very well. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, because but they are kind of there. So it's kind of finding the middle of these guys. You understand? It's, a, it's an artifact. It's an artifact. And then when I can use that information, I do exactly what he did and say, okay, given that there is this fake power law, now create a model based on that fake power law. And what, this is what they get. That very, it looks very much like the real one. This is the real one. Okay. This is the fake one. Of course, it's not going to happen at the same time, at the same place, because, um, and you know, it, I choose random places, but you will be like, for example, right? If you think there is causation, you see, I will look, there is a, like a little step here. You will say, oh, wow, you know, your model is very nice because they even uh, kind of predicted that this jump in price here, you know, this little bull run is simply because it's like Jesus, like we like to see patterns that are not there many times, right? We can say, uh, uh, you know, oh, look, you predicted that, you know, it's like seeing Jesus on a toast. That it's just a coincidence because I made it random. I choose some fake alvening. There is no alvening there. I made it up. Okay. And you will think that uh, this one caused this, right? Oh, yeah. Sometime later, the price went up like crazy. It's fake. It's all fake data. How could it case cause anything? Oh, this one, you know, oh, the bull run. Oh, well, the bull run started, but it really went up very fast. I could have made it, I could make like thousands of these models, you know, and there would be some that would be almost amazing, you know, in predicting anything because it's fake. If you can predict, if you can make it with noise, then it's like, you know, uh, a machine that is supposed to diagnose cancer, like, you know, that famous case, Terra Terranos, uh, we made this machine that we're supposed to diagnose with a little drop of blood and I put the inside blood and it tells me, oh, yeah, you are a human and uh, you have cancer. Whoa, I have cancer. I go to her doctor and they say, no, you don't have cancer. Like, what, what do you tell? That machine told me. When I am suspicious, I go there and I put my girlfriend blood. Oh, this, this is a human 
and there is cancer. I said, what the heck? She goes, no cancer. Then we put a blood, you know, a little drop from a, a pig, you know, uh, and oh, human cancer. We can't, we, it's no human. The pig doesn't have cancer. And he always says the same thing, you know, well, no matter what you put in, it has to be something wrong with the machine. I hope you agree on that. It's just how this model is constructed. It does these crazy clusters where clusters are going to create this uh, illusion of time direction. The, uh, the clusters are happening in time. The price is also going up in time. If a price was not going up in time, it was doing all kinds of random things, you will not do it. It's just this fact that the price continuously go up in a basically almost continuous way is what Bitcoin price goes. And if there is something that also goes up in time, because this is how the halving is defined, right? We are, in, in, in you know, in this case, it's not going up, it's moving to the left, is what I mean. It's moving, it's changing in time, and it's changing time in a very precise fashion, right, by a factor of two every four years. Then it will look like they are correlated because both of them are happening in time. But I can do it with noise, I can do it with uh, a, a, a many medals. Uh, you know, imagine there is a nation that every four years is improving their number of gold medals. I could take that and it will still correlate. I did it with the World Cup soccer prices. They are going up. They have been going up in the last, uh, um, you know, three or four World Cups. And that is what S2F did, right? It's growing. I can use that as my S2F with plus with some random noise. That will correlate, will, will give me a very nice S2F model. So that means it's we cannot use this data to tell anything because it doesn't tell anything. It's fake. It's why what I mean is fake. It's fake. Every result that this model will tell, it will be fake. And it looks good because we are forcing it to be good. What happens? We can project it in the future, right? Like he does, because he say, okay, if this is the formula, because we know what is going to happen to issuance or S to F in the future, so we can make a prediction. And that pre prediction will be completely fucking wrong. Will be wrong because it's based on fake data, on fake on a fake correlation. I mean, not in fake data. You can use real data, and it will be a fake prediction too, because the correlation is fake. The correlation says that every time the, ch the price changes, it should, the price should go up by, I mean, the issue changes, it should, the price should go up by 10. But it's a completely fake prediction, completely fake, because it's based on this fake correlation. So what happened? Exactly what happened last cycle. He, cannot, he made a very bad prediction. The price didn't go where he said that it was going. And he's going to make an excuse and say, China did it. No, China didn't do it. Your stupid model did it. It's like the same thing that I'm showing here. The, 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 the fitting, you see how the fitting is already not good there? And so it's not going to make a good prediction because the fitting is not good. This is why it happened. You see how every time we go up, the, uh, the steps are a little bit different from where we are. In the beginning, we're kind of low then a little bit higher, then a, a little bit higher more, right? And he says, oh, it was, uh, it was China. It was not fucking China. It has nothing to do with China. It's a bad model. And then the next one, right, is supposed to be like right now here, whatever it was, you know, 100,000, because my, I did it in my model and I didn't cheat. And the model says 100,000. When it says 550,000 is wrong, it's actually kind of close to 100,000, but it doesn't matter. So the next one should be even higher. It should be 100, 500,000 at a minimum. But wait, remember, it's the middle. It's the middle. It's not the top, you see? And that is a fake prediction because it be, is based on this fake correlation. And when it will not reach 500,000, remember, not the top, but the middle. So if it is the middle, the top, maybe what it needs to be, like a million, you know, to be consistent with this model, you know, we need to reach a million top. We'll never reach a million top. He will refit the model like he did, like recently. He refitted. He even say so. He say, I'm refitting. I have a post. I have a post where he say, 
I refitted the model. And this is why it needs to do it, because otherwise it's not going to work, because I, I, you know, this is what is called overfitting. You're forcing it to fit because you say, well, you know, the algorithm say, okay, you're saying there is a, a correlation. It looks like there is a correlation. It's fake. I explain you how you can get the correlation because of these jumps. And then you say, okay, this is how the model looks like. I'm telling you there is no correlation because it's flat in between and there are these weird jumps, but okay, this is how it looks like. So it's trying to make it work, you know, at the best that it can. But the future will not work. It cannot work. But when the prediction doesn't come true, that is exactly what happened last cycle, he comes up with excuses. This is what is going on. And he will come up with excuses also this time. If he goes to 300, he will say, you see, I told you 500. No, he told me the middle, not the top. He will confuse, he's never precise. You know, is he predicting the middle? Is he pre predicting the top? You see, I, it was within my range, etc. It's bullshit, it's bullshit because it has no the power to predict anything. It's, we know already, we don't have to wait. We can see already that it doesn't work. It doesn't. You understand? Uh, it's a fake correlation. If it can be reproduced by noise, it's fake. And you can see it's not just, it's all the things I told you before. The blob, the fact that the blobs are square. You see how square they are? That is a sign. You know what he will say if I, his reply, and, and I'm going to stop here, is this. He will say, because I also talk with him, I explain all these things. So he will reply and say, well, okay, uh, so the price didn't jump because of a change in issuance, but, you know, we had a bubble because, uh, you know, and it took some time for the bubble to appear because there was kind of a deficit, right? By producing less coin, we had this, like he calls it, supply shock, etc. It's bullshit because you can see what the price does is just changing. Again, it goes up and down. I mean, it goes up by itself, like it was doing before, before there was the supply shock. It's doing exactly the same thing. Why did we have a bubble in the beginning <coughs> before any halving? Why did we have a bubble and we didn't have any halving? We did have a, bu a bubble, right, before the halving. And so is it doing exactly what it was doing in the pre when before the halving? <laughs> exactly the same thing. It's going up, it, there is a bubble, and... Yeah, the halving and the bubble are in the same blob, but it's not that one causes the other. There is no any link. There is any logical, mathematical, physical link between the two. And the data say so. The data is the most important thing because if you are making a model, it has to be based on data. And so he's cheating by... Uh, as claiming that uh, ODC is reproducing the data. It's not reproducing the data. I can do it with noise. It's garbage. It's pure, hotter garbage. And it makes me mad because people don't understand how these models are created. They don't understand the math. They are like little, like, I don't know, chickens, you know, that, uh, or children, you know, that are fascinating by a magical trick. And if you go and say, look, it's a magical trick, there is not really a rabbit, you know, the guy doesn't make the rabbit appear from nothing. There is a rabbit already there. And people get mad because I'm revealing the trick, you know. Okay, with the trick is, maybe you don't want to know the, the trick, but with this, you should want to know because people are basing decisions. They are trying to understand Bitcoin. So people should know it's a fucking trick. You understand? It's really bad. Very, 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 very bad. And I will not be so mad if it was not this bad. 